Okay. Some revert some like um that about, like, approaches. Yeah, about like roughly about like half an hour after Henderson, she won't be aware of this, but um Natalie will go will uh go uh, a knocking on the library door. And she, she will actually also peek through the hole <laughs> look at River. <laughs> yes, hello, it's not private property. Cool. <laughs> and she um comes in. <laughs> sits across from you. So, um, this can't really wait because, like, of everything that happened. Um, so, you need to be up to speed on, like, the creature shit, like, now. Yes, I agree. Cool. Glad you did. Anderson's so. report. <laughs> She's most likely read some of them, but hasn't had a ton of time since only a couple of days at best. So, um, just so I don't go anything like you already know and like waste your time or whatever, um, tell me what you know so far. All right, so the giant deer, which I assume is the Wendigo, named Finnegan, yep. has attachment to lemons. You have a mental connection with him. Mm -hmm. And so does... No, it was just you two. Yeah. And then Tomo has a connection to some other that's... I, I don't know anything about that one. Okay. What else? Okay. Edge Beast used to be confined to the crops, but ever since the Spo figure disappeared, they've now been out. Mm -hmm. The gargoyles are capturing people. They so have to be looking at them. Everyone has their own gargoyle. It's about accurate. Um, it's unknown whether they are working together, the Hedge Spo, and all of this. Mm. Yeah, essentially. Um, so, just to fill in some gaps, uh, uh, the person that, well, the entity at least, that Tomo has a connection with is, um, was in life called Vane Lafleur. Um, she is a uh, Chinese ancestor. Uh, she and Finnegan uh, were married at one point and they raised uh, two adoptive children together until um, the time came where, uh, for a reason, um, Finnegan killed her. Um, because. Yeah. You, you'd, have, you'd have probably liked Finnegan in life. He was a scientist. He um, he worked. He was the person, first person to properly work on the uh, blood soil because um, his uh, adoptive daughter Infinity got it, and that's why uh, he started working on it. His Were you ever work, able to recover his notes? Uh, well, that's the thing. We found part of one of them. Um, and they basically detailed how you have, have you seen the mimics yet? No, I don't think so. They're, um, small, uh, kind of like skinny, um, largely hairless humanoid creatures with glowing white eyes. Um, and they basically, um, they operate like, kind of like mocking jays, but the people. Um, Fun. yeah, um, so he, so Finnegan, that's, so when the go man ate those as a byproduct of his blood soil research and he's, you captured one to study it? No, There's uh, we, some answers. Well, they they are uh altered humans basically kind of like um I'm, I'm hesitant to say a zombie virus but that would be the the more apt summary of what was go what's going on there um henderson's wife julia cur is currently like under the thrall of Finnegan, 
because she believes that he can bring back her son um, who we don't really know the fate of he might be dead he might have been turned into a mimic himself we don't know but Finnegan is kind of holding that over her to kind of keep her on side so is he actively recruiting uh, he's, a- he's trying to actively recruit lemons at the moment um told me about this actually I, be- I believe it was um he said something like uh people like him need guidance which is why he did that for julia as well because julia got um separated from henderson originally and i guess ended up resorting to cannibalism to survive um which is why he became interested in her and that's why now she's working for him as kind of like a uh, a surrogate mother figure for the mimics all right so anyone who's had human flesh will be sought out by this man potentially yeah but it has to be a specific sort of cannibalism i guess he kind of also has to take like a personal interest in you but what that personal interest is I couldn't I could only really sort of hazard a guess at at best you'd have to talk to Lemons more about that or Julia should you ever uh, meet her I intend to speak to Mr. Lemons he's promised an interview Hmm. should be enlightening um so uh yeah, that's those are the mimics. Um, there are also the uh, so originally, like the the creatures in this town were like given five classes. Um, class ones now no longer exist. Uh, they were called wisps. Um, they were kind of like living shadow creatures that, that like literally inhabited the dark. That if you touched them they uh, gave you instant internal damage. Oh my. Yeah, uh, they weren't fun. They hurt like a bitch. Um, But we haven't seen them since we killed um, Vane Lafleur, who was currently possessing uh, Aubrey Lafleur's body. Although apparently Vane isn't fully dead because she kind of still has a has connection going on with Tomo. And Aubrey? Aubrey is, was Cheney's twin sister. Oh, there were two of them. Yeah. Uh, You would have liked Aubrey, though. Very similar to you. Um, Withdrawn, smart as balls, not a good people person. Oh, Uh, you missed then. mm. Um, So, you know how Cheney does, like, magic shit? Aubrey could do that too, but she did different stuff. Whereas Jenny does like lightning and fire and all that kind of sort of business. Aubrey, I think, did space and and mind shit. So like she could read your mind like any time she wanted. Would have been interesting. Mm. Helpful now. No doubt about it, but um, Aubrey's plan worked after a fashion. She uh, basically set up a lot of what's going on in the town so that um, Vane would possess her and sh- so that Vane could be killed and the Wisps could be defeated. Because basically before you came, there was a time where to go out in the dark was dangerous because of the Wisps. Um, oh, so it remains dangerous. Mm-hmm. Except uh, now you can actually walk into areas of darkness without having to worry about the darkness literally, like, stabbing your organs. Which is... which makes things easier, but, um... Still not ideal. Uh... (laughs) The, um... The connection was set up by her, actually. The Tomo and I have between, uh, and Vane. Originally, we were given some of their memories, but 
when because Vane LaFleur was a mage too so when she and Aubrey met and Vane possessed her and like took over her apparently there was like some kind of cosmological feedback or something like that that basically do you know, you know what Vane could do? Uh, no but her thing was like I, I gathered it was more kind of to do with light and darkness which makes sense she didn't happen to tap into Aubrey's abilities when she possessed her uh, that's exactly what she ended up doing for when we actually went to confront her um, she warped our perception of like yeah, like a small pocket dimension for us to uh, navigate through that were made up of like rooms and environments from our memories and your friend Tom uh, has you reported any activity uh, once but um, nothing since how long ago December It's the same for me with um, Finnegan. Tonight, well, last night was the first time I'd seen, I'd had that connection with him since. It seems to be triggered when one of them has something that either Tomo or myself need to know. That seems awfully vague. I know, right? Appreciate it on that one but um, as a side effect it does temporarily grant them potential access to our memories now is this more of an internal like what you really need to know without even knowing it or could you trick it into thinking? Uh, a bit of both actually because that was more or less what happened the first time um Finnegan and I talked he basically tried to lie to me and pass the thing off as like him being like an apparition and like an after image to help guide me but um, no I uh, saw through him and uh, found out that shocker it was actually him the alive him and we were straight up talking through mind magic what happens to you physically while you're having these I'm asleep so the same would be for him? Yeah. But presumably he's as most vulnerable when he's speaking to you. Potentially, but maybe not. I don't know what the effect is for him. Anyways, go on. Okay. Um, so, uh... Edge piece. Um, so... The reason that um, the reason that Bo's kind of involved in all this is because he is potentially what's called a um, a uh, true fay, I believe. Um, ah, yes, I'm doing research on them now. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what that entails but I presume it means they're a big fucking deal um, which is presum true. which is hmm, fair enough which is presumably why uh, the hatch portal has been made open and why the beasts keep pouring through we don't know why or what the origin of it is or if Bo is behind it why he, what his motive is but I guess we'll get more answers when and if we find him again. Um, it's an awful coincidence that the activities happened after he disappeared. Mm. No, I don't think it's coincidence. Um, he did meet with Theo, and apparently he seemed to be having the mother of all existential crises, because the reason he thought he was Bo, or named Bailey Oberbriller, is... From what I can gather, something really bad happened involving him and 
Aubrey and Cheney's um, brother uh, Roderick, who's the ace of clubs before Matthew Hellings. Um, I don't know what happened, but I'm guessing as a result of it, Aubrey used her magic to install fuckloads of fake memories into Bo, to the point where Bo believed he was human. And took on I'd, something for human form. And Frank, You're take the warning. Why would they keep someone like that around without attempting to get rid of him? No idea. I reckon he's far more dangerous than any of us could perceive. Potentially, yeah. But the memories didn't leave him. They're still there. So if they are we can use them to our advantage. We shall see. Mm, fingers crossed. Uh, uh, da, 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 what else was? Oh yeah. Um, there. Um, so you you've heard about uh, Infinity Brittle, um, Vane and Finnegan's adopted daughter, but n not their adopted son. Uh, Omega Riddle. So, um... Time. I've heard time. Yeah. Uh, he, um... We don't know what, what exactly happened with him, but he was originally a human boy, and he has been transformed into a creature with a clock for a face that has kind of a localized, uh, kind of time distortion field around him to where he... He can speed up external time relative to you or like slow it down relative to you so if you spend like a second near him like a minute could have passed for the rest of the world but for you it would have only been a second now Kinda is like, it always a minute to an hour ratio are we always uh, losing time nope. Or is yeah. there... It's, it's always losing, um, but the ratio, like, we haven't really measured it. It's never been consistent because um, electronics tend to freak out when, they get, when uh, they get in close proximity with him. So it's never been where you've been near him for a minute and only a second's passed? No. Um... It's never been the slow version. It's Fortunate. always been the it's always been the sped up one. I'd heard the prospect, and that sounded interesting. Uh, the what? Sorry. Just the prospect of being able to be in a room with something and slow down time. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's the weird thing. Actually, you don't notice that it's slowing down time when you're near it. It's only when it's left that you realize, oh shit, I basically jumped forward in time. Well, if we had found a monster that did the reverse, imagine putting that in a study, and only being mm. in there a minute with a week's worth of knowledge. Um, you could always ask him, but... Um, <laughs> I'd be interested she... in coming along to that one. I have no doubt. Um, just... Bear in mind that although he may look like a creature, he is he does still have does still have the heart and mind of a boy. So from what we can gather in that respect, for him, I don't think that much time's passed, but of course for us it's been hundreds of years. Fair enough. Um Concerning the blood soil as well, um, it's it's it, it, a, a first like we thought it was a disease of supernatural origin. Uh, there's currently um, the mines beneath this town are currently infested with it. It's straight up not safe to go there. Um, uh, if we ever get a sample with it, I'm sure you'd love to study it. Like, it's a microbiologist and a parasitologist. Like, wet dream, essentially. If, 
If that's what we recovered at Liz's place, I I have samples. Oh, good. Um, could you test them? Uh, so I would love to get them from the mines as well to compare. I wouldn't go there. Apparently, like it's super virulent there. Um, like it's super duper infectious. Um, I can get the equipment. Although, the problem with it, and I just only recently found this out myself, it's semi-sentient. It's more like a parasite than it is a virus. Interesting. It kind of, like, uses up um, hosts, which is... Because basically the symptoms of you getting it are kind of a slow burn. It's like... um. You know the uh, the there's a sexually transmitted infection. I think it's called uh, HPV, where you don't know if you've got it until symptoms start to um, show up, basically. Yeah, so it hides, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it hides until more external symptoms start to exhibit themselves, and at that point, it's. Uh, you're on a downward slope from there. Um, Have you checked to make sure no one in the team is infected? From what we can tell, nobody is. But... Be wise to count I have, a test after being in that house. Yeah, uh, well, we did all have a test, um, and none of us were infected that went in there. Um, although... I do currently have my doubts about Arthur, so at some point I'm going to have to take a blood test on him. I, I would happily verify to... with you. Thank you. Um, they're pretty, uh, it's pretty obvious to spot if you see it, like it's fairly active, apparently, like within blood samples. So, uh, yeah, um, basically it, <laughs> you'll, you'll know it when you see it. It's not hard to spot. Um, blood soil in the hedge. What makes the blood soil supernatural? <sighs> because we don't know where it comes from and it exhibits symptom it exhibits like bacterial or bacterial or viral symptoms but it it can jump from person to person so it's contagious yeah provided you um don't come into contact with um an, in an infected person's blood suppose my bigger question would be what what defines normal and supernatural? I suppose I should do more reading on that. Yeah. That that line uh, does kind of get blurred around here. <laughs> I'm still convinced all of this can. Well, there are, there certainly are explanations. They just a lot of it doesn't abide by traditional laws of science. For example, like Cheney just basically makes thermodynamics her bitch by existing. Um, I'm very sure she won't let me study that. Yeah. Is her age a condition or a side effect of that uh, power? condition. She, uh, she and Aubrey suffered from a uh, growth hormone disorder. And they verified this? Yeah. Alright. It's on the med history, I believe. Um, it was kind of... I think it was congenital, but uh, their, uh, um, their brother um, lucked out, quote-unquote, and uh, didn't contract it himself. Is 
was left curious and stopped time seems to run in the family. Mm-hmm. Well, they're only related to Omega via adoption. Um, I understand, but it leaves me curious. Oh, it's it's more the mage thing that ran in the blood. So, by ancestor, they aren't directly related. No, they are directly. The two children were adopted. They're not related by the adoptive kids, but they are related to her, presumably by uh, another family line. Correct. I don't know what that family tree is. I don't know. They don't know themselves. Um, they We're didn't know themselves. Uh, Cheney and, both Cheney and Aubrey were orphans. And Roderick, I'll too. Make it more yeah, right. They don't even know all that much themselves. Well, they didn't anyway. Cheney doesn't really know. All she knows is uh, she was raised in the orphanage on the edge of town that's been closed down. Oh, shit! I didn't tell you about the matriarch, either. Oh, go on. So, um, there was a uh, Cardian uh, who was uh, master of the orphanage and who basically acted as uh, Cheney Aubrey and Roderick's uh, surrogate mother called Jessica Holler. Don't really know what happened with her. At some point she died, possibly, but it seems that didn't stick and she's being mutated into a creature that we like to call the matriarch. She's basically made of knives. And she will attack you on sight. Unless you're Cheney. Is she still there? Oh yeah, she's still there. And so this would count more as a ghost entity or? More of a localized threat. So long as nobody goes into the orphanage. There's no tie-in as to how she became that way? We don't actually know. There's more questions I don't want to ask, Janie. That's if she did tell you. Doubtful. Anything else? Uh, trying to think. Um, there may be like other things that get drawn to this town, uh, because of the hedge portal. Um, that's what happened with Dagmar. Um, you know, the uh, flamboyant one who was hanging around Sal in the hedge? There were several of those. Uh, you couldn't tell what uh, gender they was. There were several of those. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, pink boots turned up naked by exploding out of a cat. Oh, that one. Yeah. That cat is now a mildly terrifying creature from beyond the veil of time and space that eats dreams, apparently. Such an interesting little creature. Hmm. Where's Dagmar? Go on. So, yeah. um, Dagmar is a uh, succubus. Probably from hell. Probably. Oh, that's real. Good to know. Yeah, apparently is. I didn't really think about that at the time. Existential crises aside. Makes um, everything better. Uh, so we encountered Dagmar uh, while on a night off in Sturgeon's Bay, and he basically wanted to use the uh, hedge portal as a... a like a shortcut to a meeting he was going to have in the hedge 
we couldn't trust him, so we we basically ended up killing him, and in our attempts to killing him, we burned down a shopping mall. How do those relate? Was he in the mall? Yeah. He, uh, that and uh, apparently they don't like fire. It's, Demons it, don't like fire. No, it, it, it like stops their healing process. Because they have like a, they have the, they, at least Dagmar did, um, they have an ability to kind of heal themselves. But oh, no, that, fire... doesn't surpri- that doesn't surprise me. The, the concept that a demon can't heal in fire, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not what you'd think, right? Well, then you throw out all of my uh, stereotypes. Right. But uh, yeah, so um, that was just one example. There was also uh, a vampire, like drifter, hanging around the edge of town, preying on like hitchhikers and shit. Also called apparently called Natalie, um, but she's dead now. So, um, but those are just like examples of how like other external supernatural things can be drawn to this town. So just to get this out of the way, should I just assume most fairy tale things I've heard are real? It's basically what we've had to do. I mean, fuck you encountered pixies, except they weren't like delightful little sprite creatures. They were horrifying things that leak black all over you if you burst their egg sacs. <laughs> Not like shudders and like <laughs> brushes our arms. Oh, it wasn't that awful. Just a side effect. Yeah. Tragic, I lost my sample. Mm. Still not nice to have, like, embryonic fluid all over you from a creature that wants to... Fair enough. I'll give it to you. But yeah, so... I just assume... Uh, like, I've kind of just been assuming that both... A, lots of things are real, but also B, they're probably not going to be like what you expect. I've seen enough of that already. So yeah, you uh, should do fine in that regard. Just, um, I would say be prepared, but like, there's so many things to prepare for, it's difficult to actually do it um as one with experience how controlled are they of the information what do you mean the cardians division and holding it from the public well you don't really tend to find out until it's too late so i'd say pretty fucking good but at this rate, are we basically going to recruit everyone who's seen it? Eh. Apparently recruitment's not the only option. I can only imagine what the others are. Well, there is, like... I think one of them is, like, bribing them to stay quiet. Another is... Um, memory wiping uh don't know what the rest are but uh that and i don't think cardians is the only group that deals with this sort of thing well all valuable information thank you for bringing this to me you're welcome. Finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> Raise his eyebrow. Okay, um... No funnel out, I see. Uh, so... <laughs> uh... The immediate can... thought is those guns are pathetic to mine. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay, dump blood soil, then... Finnegan and... 
done the oh yeah um yeah you know about um the ghost of miss st bellings right i know it's no longer there yeah. shame yeah um i wouldn't have minded you two meeting she uh interesting thing thing is she uh she was a cardian herself um a jack of something or other um but she seems to have uh been the previous host of um blood soil before arthur if arthur is the current host host is an infected or is this a different thing well that's why I specified that the that uh, blood soil is more of a parasite. It it kind of has an active host pattern, but it's semi. It's more related to one family, specifically the same Bellingses. It also have a different effect depending on the blood. Uh, we don't know, but all we know is a Arthur's been sick for a while b if he is the current host judging by what happened to his mom he's gonna die from it eventually and c um it will probably take longer than it does for a normal person person who is in the same bellings who would get infected by it to succumb to its effects because for her she was like in her 40s or 50s so she will probably had it for years, but the normal infection to death rate is weeks. Wait, so once it starts showing, it's within weeks? Uh, or the average who would not be this host of the blood soil dies? The person who isn't the host ends up dying within weeks from first contact. So the hosts are special in that they live longer. Yeah. Hence why I classified it as a parasite. It, it's basically using them as... It's kind of like semi-vampiric carriers. So his presence here, would he be contagious to the rest of us? Should we only, be having a quarantine room set up? Only if he bled on us. But even then, like we still have to verify it. Hence why blood test. Did we check who all treated his wounds after I'd given him the bullet? Oh, of course, but, like, n no one's stupid enough to, like, do medical stuff without using, like, proper gloves and equipment. It can't penetrate, um, standard, like, latex gloves. Hey, Abba, my concern is for Sal, who was in the room at the time. And you, who had an open wound as well. Yeah. It's... It's fine, though, so long as... It, it's basically, like, transmitted through his blood. It's only by blood contact. Yes. This has been tried and true? Yeah. Thank you, man. She nods. But yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't get through standard medical shit, so you're fine with that. Um, again, well, like any parasite, couldn't it be removed? I think that's what Finnegan's been working on for as long as he has. That's, which is why, which is actually why he has become a Wendigo. He wants to destroy it. Apparently. I feel like there are better routes to go with that. Well, that's more or less what I told him. Except in a lot more in, insulting way and a and a lot more cr morally criticizing way. But uh, you know, well, if you're trying to cure something, that's involves human blood, I'd imagine you wouldn't want to be eating it. No. We'll have to ask him where his line of thought was. 
Well, you two are quite analytical, so I imagine you have a field day with that. Hey, if uh, he ever pops up up here again, she taps the side of her head. I always ask him. Oh, but I just have a trigger finger when I see a deer. Fair enough. I passed that on, actually. <laughs> good, good. He get, yeah, he, uh... <laughs> he doesn't seem to like you very much. Um, when he encounters topics he doesn't like or is uncomfortable with, he just straight up doesn't talk about them or ignores them. I've made and, uh, you scared. He did that with you. <laughs> I might take some delight in this. <laughs> you should. I will have to make it clear that to leave my test subject alone. How much interesting to find in lemons. A healing property is something special. Yeah. Wait, why are you focusing on that in particular? I'd already caught my interest to back at the hedge. Okay, but what about it specifically? Well, originally it was just this condition of eating people, oh. strange prey, but that healing, something, as you're aware, humans can't do on their own. Yeah, no shit, we're not fucking lizards or whatever. Yes. Well, whatever this Finnegan's been working on, figured out how to advance human healing. Mm-hmm. It's... It might just be part of the Wendigo curse, though, because... That's why Lemons is the way he is now. Has he shown this rapid healing on his own? No, not before tonight. Not before no, tonight. not Lemons. Finnegan. Uh, Does he possess these traits? We don't know. Tonight's if he only the has first... one eye... Tonight's the first time we've been, uh, we've actually been able to physically damage him. Thanks to you for that. Although he didn't, didn't we grow back his horn? Although that may just be a deer thing. Well, standard deer would be seasonal, but if he had advanced healing, I imagine he could get it back. Maybe, maybe not. Don't know. Just wonder what he's using those horns for. Mm -hmm. Can't imagine he's challenged by others for oh. mating purposes. I'd rather Maybe. not. Oh. Maybe they're decorative. I don't know. Oh okay. no. Well, in a way, it could just be for intimidation. Does sound like something you'd do. Either way, worth looking into. Oh no, totally. Totally. Um, what else? Spike nurses, I want to see if that growth is at a cellular level. Why? You tap into that. That's gonna roll an empathy. <laughs> uh, that's complete. Yeah, she's very interested in uh, tapping into that healing. You seem to always come back to that. The lives in survival, the top priority of all humans. Oh, I know, but like it. For you, I mean, I believe that is part of it, but you don't seem like a person who is just motivated by that alone. Of course, I'm always motivated by science and its advancements. What a name I'd have for myself if I discovered regeneration.
who got hurt? Oh, I think we've seen enough people get hurt. You know that's not what I'm asking. She's got a face. <laughs> what face? And is there's that? definite refusal to continue. <laughs> Is that, is that the rest? Yeah, uh, you're like a face. This, yeah, it's a rest cap. A face <laughs> of you're prying. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be a reroll? Yeah, it'd be a reroll for both of us. She, <laughs> she nods. Holds it. Holds it around. Fair enough. Rest no. Whatever it is, I won't pry. Was there anything else needed? Uh, the, so turn the blood song, turn the trees, turn the gargoyles, turn the the mimics, turn the wisps, turn the whole deal with. Finnegan Vane, we've done Omega. Um, oh yeah, uh, about Omega, he usually, like if you ever want to find him, I guess, he uh, usually hangs around by the steel mill. But he might not show himself to you necessarily, just because he avoids people usually. Aside from the time consequences, he's nonviolent? Yeah. Like I said, he's basically still mentally um, human. Is he in requirement of food still, or is he can he manage? That shrugs. No idea. You may not know me, but food is its way to any animal's heart. True. Don't know what he'd even eat, though. I don't know if he even does eat. I'll leave little care packages and see which ones actually disappear. Fair. What else? What else? What else? Um... Uh, I think that's it for now. Shrug. Then we may continue after we figure out what is wrong with Arthur. Yeah, good idea. Um, we need to uh, get on that uh, as soon as he's awake. I would do it sooner, but like, I don't want to. I don't want to break bodily autonomy. Oh, we just need a blood sample. No, I know, but like it. Again, that was that was the thing they said not to do in medical school. Like you always have to tell the patient that. Oh, well, luckily I. Didn't. Sorry, you caught that. What did she say? <laughs> luckily, I didn't attend. So where do you get your doctorate in? I'm a biologist. Okay, but like, I'm, I meant your doctorate in degree. But <laughs> I'd have to do research. <laughs> but the tiny nerd who's only gotten into college. <laughs> She give you something something I'm a nerd, I don't, or not a nerd. I'm the opposite. I do not have the knowledge on this. <laughs> PhD. Yeah. Oh, nice. So Oh, this must be a bit of a far cry from that then, I guess. Not entirely. 
Spells mm. not. I'm still studying predator animals. They just have the title of supernatural. That's a way of looking at it. And hell, with all the, with the amount of people I've patched up, and the fact that like I once enacted like a super fucking sketchy but still successful like blood like DIY blood transfusion, I fuck. I should have already passed all my all my exams. At least you have the skill. It doesn't matter whether anyone else agrees. That you have it. Thanks. I mean, I'm usually the one they turn to now for medical shit, but... For everything else, I just... Just want to be the person that gets listened to, you know? Oh, believe me, it's hard. Whether you have the knowledge or not, whether they're willing to listen to it. Hmm... We, uh, do have a bit of a problem with that in this division. <laughs> I have learned. Yeah. I still to... cannot believe that worked. Uh, Should all be dead. Yep. But, uh, I mean, I guess it was a decent plan. Reckless uh, is all fuck, but... I'll forever hold that the plan was horrible. We should all be dead. I guess that uh, Finnegan, in his warning to me, didn't really account for us using the behavior of the hedge beasts against them. Then he might have forgotten that I had a fucking flamethrower. That was a boon. Yeah, that's a <laughs> funny story, actually. Um, I, in part, made the flamethrower specifically for hedge shit. Oh, so you built it yourself? Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. We had such a savvy crafter. I'm not the savviest, though. That would probably be Theo. I know, I, with everyone leaving town here because of the quarantine, will be needing some hands for building my new lab. I mean, fuck, both of us could probably pitch in. I would absolutely pay for the services. Oh shit, thanks. Wouldn't want so... any of you asking for a favor. <laughs> God forbid, she says sarcastically with a smile. We'll do a smug into it. So, um, I'm curious, like you're paying for all this shit exactly how rich are you uh, i've got a name oh shit so you're like old money older yes it's it still all belongs to my father but luckily i'm in his good graces fair shit so, like, your personal worth, is it, like, in the millions, or...? Roughly. <laughs> Jesus. Here's, here's me bulking my student loan repayments of, like, thousands. Uh, it definitely had its benefits. Oh, I don't doubt it. Don't have to be saddled with debt for most of your life. <laughs> Of meant I could retreat to Canada. I do miss that. Yeah. You do end up missing your old life here, but at the same time, like, you also get caught up in everything that's happening, so you don't at times. I feel it's like, like I, can, I can figure it out and Compromise. The one big difference is the amount of people here. Yeah. Um, I imagine going from more or less isolation to uh, like a literal town. Um, 
I had ten years of talking to one single person. Yeah, it's uh, it's shit. Um, that was good though. Um, I th- think though, moving forward, if only for necessity's sake, you you're gonna have to get better at dealing with people. Yes, and I've faced this reality. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, pack now, and I must bend to this will. Not frowns at that. Are we a pack? I wouldn't say so. Well, how are we not? You've got your pre-designated alphas that you follow the orders of. Mm. We watch each other's backs. Even when the ideas are awful and we're all going to die doing them. And then it's to to the surprise of basically everybody when we don't. I'm still writing that off. Yeah. Going to pretend it didn't happen for my own sanity. Oh no, I'm gonna totally not do that just because, like, like I finally got to fucking show those motherfuckers. The Hedge Beast, not anything else. Also, after the court, it's nice stuff. Yeah. Fuck the Hedge. I'll be a much better place when I can write the reality. It makes sense again. Yeah, it should be, but um, it's probably gonna sound really fucking impressive. I think it ever will. Or at least it won't make sense in the way that it did before. I get all these books down, and I find a pattern, everything will seem at least vaguely. Yeah, exactly. You just sort of end up rolling with it, I guess. Good talk. And she gets up. <laughs> Seeming, <laughs> seems she seems satisfied. If you have any more information that's pertinent, always feel free to drop by. I will. Even if you don't necessarily want me to, because <laughs> uh, there will be times when we'll need to know it. Well, I will always want to hear. She frowns. You didn't before. <laughs> I was busy. I need to get the basics before I hear all the details. I could have given you the basics. No, you neglected to. It, you told me fucking not to. I may have been a little stubborn and wanted to figure it out myself. May have been. I'm not letting you win this. There's there's nothing to lose. It the, the battle does a little, already does a little hand flick. <laughs> You're on uh, your way. The battle was already fought, River. <laughs> I have put up no white flags. You don't need to. The battle was won. You you you're too late. Your army your army came and the other army's already gone and left and hung up their trophies at home. Trophies of lies. They're truth and you know it. She's opening her book again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Heyo. <laughs> hey. 